is the toast at her own wedding. I do. <laughs> I love this man. And yes, there is shrimp in the egg rolls. Oh, Rabbi, problem. she's kidding. We can be downtown people, close to the clubs. I thought you wanted to be a cool chick. I can be a cool chick with a doorman and a Calvinator Fooderama refrigerator, can't I? Yes, you can. Sometimes I get a good feeling. Joel left you? Yeah. Why? What did you do? Did you ever think you were supposed to be something and you, and you suddenly realize you're not? Yes. Married. I get a feeling that I never, never had before. No, no. I was a great wife. I was fun. Yeah. I, I can't believe I'm losing him to Penny Pan. That's her name. Penny <laughs> Pan. I'm sorry, but look at me. Who wouldn't want to come home to this every night? And I gotta tell you right now. Oh. Hey, Bob Newhart's got a set of these at home. Rickled maybe. Fifteen years I've been working in clubs, okay? Twice have I seen someone deliver the goods. What are you talking about? I'm talking about your act. I am a mother. I don't have an act. And you will when we're done. Hi, everybody! I heard some uptown chick got arrested doing a set. What's the crime? Simulating a sex act while on stage. That's bullshit! This is Maisel! She's gonna do what with the life? <sighs> Sit around all day long eating bonbons. Is that what you want for her? Of course not! If that's what's gonna happen! It's not! Is hey, get, get out of here! This comedy thing, it has to work. I'm gonna count to five. One. That's the end of my show, folks. Two. Tune in next week when my grandmother steals Three. my pearls and fucks my boyfriend. Four. We charge for pictures now. There's something here about miming a whore tickling a man's testicles. Oh, I oh, did. Yeah, do that. she did. It was fucking funny. Amazon's Marvelous Mrs. Mazel. I love this show so Maisel. much. Mazel, exactly. Yeah, there we go. I know, mouthful, absolutely. Great title, though. Um, what did you first think of the character, guys? Start with you, Rachel. Yeah. Well, we like them. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the things that jumped out to me right away when I read this script was that Midge is one of the most, if not the most, unapologetically confident woman that I have ever read, and certainly that I've ever played. And and that's more true to the kinds of women that I know and love and am surrounded by and who are not represented nearly enough on screen. So that was something that was really exciting to me about this project. How about you, Michael? Um, <clears throat> Joel, uh, the character I play, who's Midge's husband, in case you haven't uh, watched the show. We're seeing this vibe right now. We're seeing the, we're seeing the relationship right now. Yeah. Um, he's, like each other. He's, uh, he's a jerk. Um, he, but, but, you know, reading, reading the, uh, the script, it was one of the best scripts I'd ever read. And, uh, at least for the first episode. And, and I didn't know what was going to happen after that. Um, because ha halfway through, I don't know if it's a spoiler or whatever, but halfway through the show, uh, he leaves Midge. Um, spoiler. <laughs> but it was, it was, exciting. it's worth watching all the way through. Absolutely. Yeah. But I knew that, you know, he was. He was coming back, so it was. It was. Uh, I was excited to see how he would um, evolve. I hear it was kind of a, a great audition process. You guys both ch kind of chased the roles. Can you tell me about that, Rachel? Yeah. Um, uh, well, I, I wanted it immediately. I went in. I, you know, the, the whole thing was fairly fairly standard. I went in for an audition for just the casting director, and then found out that Amy and Dan wanted to see me for kind of an informal screen test in LA, and I caught some kind of deathly plague between when I got that call and when I was supposed to be out there and uh, had to cancel my screen test and reschedule. I rallied a little too soon. It was disgusting. I was, I was so you sweating. You chased it. You actually went across. You went to the West Coast to chase this role. I, I did. Yeah. Yeah, with the plague. <laughs> and what was that process like? You read a couple scenes and then there was some stand-up comedy, right? Because you do some stand-up comedy in the show. Yeah. So the scenes that I read, which then we read... One of them together. Yeah. The scenes that I read were, which two? I don't uh, remember. We did the, the breakup scene and yeah. the, uh, the one where... Oh, the Bob Newhart scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That wasn't in my original oh. audition. I did the, the wedding mm. monologue that opens the pilot. Mm. Which is so good. Thank you. Oh, yeah. the, it's, it's a good speech. The, the breakup scene with Joel yeah. and then her final 
breakdown <laughs> at the end of the episode. I love that the first audition scene is the breakup with Joel. That's how you're meeting. Michael I know. Z. That is, we read that together. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. I, uh, yeah, I, I had auditioned for Amy and Dan, the creators, and uh, I thought I blew it. I, I left there, th- you know, they, they said, um, if, if somebody says to you, like, thanks for coming in, it was nice meeting you, that's usually the kiss of death. That's usually, like, it's, it's over, it's not happening. And I walked all the way back to the West Village from Midtown. I was just, like, in my own head, just thinking how much I blew it. And, uh, and then I got back, and I started writing an email to my agents saying, um, you know, that it's not going to go forward, and, and uh, I didn't you get were out, You were putting that energy out there yeah, already. I'm usually very perceptive about these things. And, like, literally, like, five minutes later, I got a... Um, uh, an email saying that I was supposed to go in the next morning and read with this one right here. And that, that was a good audition. <laughs> yeah, I it felt was, like I was blowing it for you. No, <laughs> it was, it no we, we, uh, they let us like, uh, read it beforehand. Mm. Remember? You? you were the only one I got to do that with. Well, <laughs> that's why I got the part. I liked exactly. I liked you better, obviously. <laughs> yeah. No, tell me about Dan and Amy Sherman Paladino. I mean, they're so amazing as writers. What'd you guys like about meeting them? I, I mean, Get more girls. I mean, yeah. the credits speak for themselves. They're incredible. They are so smart and sharp and funny and, and such an inspiring team. They work so well together. I grew up watching Gilmore Girls and loved it. I did not, but... Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? I, I, yeah, I, I still have never seen an episode of Gilmore Girls. What? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I just... I, 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 I was flipping through man, channels. Uh, recently, I was flipping through channels, and I came across an episode, and I they talk so fast, and like it was, <laughs> it was like a walk into it was like a ten minute scene, and and it just gave me like panic attacks because like I knew that, you know, I'm gonna be doing that. So this was I think right before we started. Oh. So yeah, um, but you were I'm worried that go was back. Gonna be I'm like... gonna go and, and watch the whole thing. But Dan. Uh, he was like the showrunner on Family Guy uh, the first couple of seasons, and I'm a huge Family Guy fan. And Alex Borstein, who's on the show, plays Susie. She's Lois Griffin. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, I, I, of course I knew of Gilmore Girls, but I just never watched it, sadly. I don't know. I think he's lying. What do you think, Rachel? <laughs> Find out later. <laughs> Find out Let later, you know. exactly. I mean, what do you think about meeting them and, and working with them after, you know, admiring their work for so long? I, I mean, it was, a, it was a dream I didn't know I had. Uh, they, one of the cool things about working with them on this show is that they came from, from broadcast TV. Um, they came from, what was it, the WB? Yeah. It's now the CW. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and other <laughs> similar places. And over at Amazon, they have been told yes from the very beginning. They have been entrusted with, with their own vision, I think maybe for the first time, and they've been given the budget to to bring this show to life. They've been able to stretch their wings and they they have a crystal clear vision and they run a tight ship. It's been it's been awesome. And we're and we're still getting to know each other and we're lucky to have another season to keep doing that. Yeah, I mean the the show is absolutely beautiful. I mean we got to watch it on a big screen during the premiere here in New York City at the East Village. I mean, tell me about you know being around some of that the production value. You know, being around that that scale. You know, and what it was like building those sets and wearing those costumes. I mean, they're incredible. Nineteen fifties, you know, came to life. Yeah. Um, well, I, I I had done Boardwalk Empire before this, and it's very similar. In fact, it's the uh, Bill Groom who was the uh, production designer on Boardwalk. He does this, so it it, it reminded me of that um, without uh, as much murder. Um, but uh, so far. another spoiler. So far, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's just, first of all, it's Amazon, so that they, they clearly have a lot of money. Um, but yet you just, you walk on set and, and you're surrounded by the 1950s. I mean, you, you know, or, or if you're shooting, you know, they would close down streets and, and uh, you'd have all the old cars lined up and, and you're just, you're there. It's, it's just, I mean, as an actor, you can't ask for anything better. It just puts you right there. Yeah. But you, Rachel, I mean, was it like filming in that, in that uh, environment? It makes our job very easy. We don't have to do a lot of pretending when the world is so detailed and complete around you. Down, I mean, every last detail. We, we felt like we time traveled. We were breathing the air. And it was nice. It was, it was a gift for us to be able to shoot outside so much. Mm-hmm. We did shoot on a stage in Brooklyn. Um, but we also, we shot just around the corner. We shot a day in Washington Square Park. We I shot, remember that day. Uh, yeah. God, it was a thousand degrees. We all nearly died. It's a miracle we're still here. But we, 
we shot in the East Village, in the West Village, like, I, I, Riverside I, Park. I live in the West Village, like I mentioned before. And, uh, 12 times. What's the address? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, literally, there were, there were a few days where I looked out my window and there was the crew and, and everybody, you know, all the, the trailers were there. They actually called me once and were like, do you want a car to come take you to the location? And I was like, the location is two blocks away. I'm, I think I'm good, but you're a proper yeah, New sure, Yorker, I'll take a car. Um, proper New Yorker. <laughs> yeah. But it was really, it's, you know, it was just amazing. Like, yeah, I've never had that before where you could walk out your front door and you're on set. So. And also I should say that the costumes, um, I don't know that, I mean, I think we, we've been talking about this a lot, a lot, but, uh, the majority of Midge's costumes, honestly, like 90-something percent of Midge's costumes are made from scratch. Donna Zakowska, our brilliant, genius, freak-brained person, vomited out all these incredible ideas. She was inspired by vintage French Vogues, by Audrey Hepburn, Elizabeth Taylor, Grace Kelly, and created all of Midge's clothing. Uh, it, it, it just elevates the whole thing. Did you guys get to take any of those home? Did you try to? No. Not yet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I, I want all of Midge's coats. Well, they have to use it, I guess, for season two. Yeah, that's the know. curse of knowing we're coming yeah, back. There we go. I mean, there was a couple of turtlenecks, so you, pretty, you look pretty good there, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. Like the holy <laughs> one. You look good in a turtleneck. It's I true. Mean, what, kind of, uh, what kind of research do you guys do into that era? I mean, obviously, you had worked in that era before with Warwick Empire, but Rachel, I mean, well, did you? different era. Different, but yes. yeah, exactly, <laughs> but that, you know, that scale. Um, Rachel, what did you do to, you know, to women stand up in that era? Yeah, so the, this is my first foray into comedy. So I, I was, and, and honestly, am largely still unfamiliar with the comedy scene. So I tried to immerse myself in the world of 1950s stand-up. I that guy was on the show. Where? <laughs> this guy just passed by. Really? Are you yeah. serious? Yeah, he was. Get, get him in here. <laughs> flag him down. <laughs> yeah, hello, sir. Um, but I looked towards uh, pioneering uh, comedians like uh, Joan Rivers and Jean Carroll, um, Phyllis Diller, Moms Mabley, Lenny Bruce, Don Rickles. Tried to throw myself in, and um, and I went to we went to a show together, more than one together. Yeah. How many did we go to? Two. We started going to like uh, I went to a lot of amateur comedy nights to just observe from. You didn't bar. get up yourself. Absolutely not. <laughs> N no. If you play a doctor on TV, you should probably not try to perform <laughs> surgery because that That's a good point. Good could point, be touche. very terrible for all parties involved. And I feel the same way about stand up. Mm, yeah. yeah. Where'd you guys go and see stand up? Who, who did you like the most out of those people that you were researching? Were there any particular bits that you sort of focused the character on the most? Yeah, we went, we went to, what was it, Stand Up New York? Yeah. I went to the stand a lot. Um, I had previously been to Caroline's. I, I liked the stand a lot. It's it's a solid kind of mid-level house, but I went to stand-up New York a couple times. Um, I originally, when I first read this pilot, thought that Midge was inspired by a woman named Jean Carroll, who's kind of a lesser known, but very early female stand-up. She's beautiful and smart and funny and wears a string of pearls and gorgeous dresses and she sings a little. Uh, and she was somebody that I, that I looked to a lot during the audition process. And then kind of equally looked to a lot of other comedians. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's such an amazing cast all the way around. I mean, tell me about finding out who your TV fathers were going to be. Maybe we'll start with you, Michael. What do you think about Kevin Pollock? Oh, man. I, I, I'm a big uh, fan of Willow. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie. I love that movie. I love Willow. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had him, like, record some lines from oh, the you did? Film. Yes, I did. Oh, That's what you get I to do when you're Let him TV get away son. with out recording Willow lines. Um, so, yeah, and Usual Suspects. Uh, so, that, yeah, it was totally cool when, when I heard that he was doing it. Um, and then also just, you know, getting to work with somebody like Tony Shalhoub. I mean, Tony Shalhoub, you know? Like, I used to work at a movie theater, and uh, Men in Black played the whole summer, and, you know, he gets his head blown off. And that was my first introduction to Tony Shalhoub, and I've followed his career ever since. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just it's awesome. It's so cool. It's so cool when, you know, as an actor, when you get to work with people who you admire. How about you, Rachel and Tony? I think Michael said it all. Um, it, it, Tony's incredible. I was highly intimidated by this cast of characters that we are surrounded by, but feel so lucky. This has been one of the most supportive groups of people that, 
that I am sure I can speak for both of us, yeah. ha have ever had the privilege of working with. It's, it's a joy to come to work every day. That's something you don't get to say all that often. Um, yeah, especially when you have to like wake up at like four in the morning and, yeah. and you're actually like excited to go to work. Yeah, I, that drink 29 happen. cups of coffee. Or matcha, I drink matcha. Right, but. You don't drink <laughs> there we go, there we go. Um, I mean, there's, there's a tremendous, early in the show, there's a tremendous dinner table scene where the entire cast is down there, everyone's bickering. I mean, how hard was it to shoot that when you know, Tony and Kevin are just throwing daggers at each other? I mean, was that difficult to get through? It was fun. It was so fun. That was a tough scene, though. We, yeah. It was a, a long couple of days. Mm -hmm. I was in a corset, and I hadn't gotten used to it yet, and I just I couldn't breathe. I couldn't walk. And that, that's really all I can remember about shooting yeah. that scene. I also was in a corset. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no I, I, it was so much fun. Like, yeah, especially when everybody's there, and you, know, you just um, get to hang out between takes and talk and get to know each other. And we got, was early on, so. Yeah, that was really early on. That was the first episode we shot, we block shot episodes two and three when we came back after the pilot. Um, but yeah, it's cool. We got to listen a lot in that scene. You and yeah. I didn't yeah. do a lot of talking. <laughs> right. and so we got to watch and learn that whole thing. Do you ever thing just find yourself sort of sitting there and be like, oh, I'm, I'm acting in this scene actually. I should remember there's cameras here. It's going too fast. Um, you, 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 you can't drift for a single second. There are too many words per minute. That's the other thing about you know, Amy and Dan is uh, pace. Everything has to be super fast, um, which I don't, I don't mind. It's just very wordy, and you know, sometimes uh, it's, it's a little nerve-wracking. A lot of mouth warm-ups. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I mean, did you, were you surprised by anything else? I mean, talking about the wardrobe, were you surprised about anything else that was going on with women at that era? And, you know, what's different, what's the same, you know? Yes. On, I mean, many, many things. Um, I think one of the things, at best, this show, as do many period pieces, holds up a mirror to the world we live in today. I think you should be able to, be able, be able to notice watching this show both how far we have come and also how far we have not come and how many of the same battles we're still fighting today, particularly as women um, and, and for women in comedy. Uh, but also, on a lighter note, I, I don't believe that women drank water then because you cannot pee <laughs> with all of the, con seriously, with all of the contraptionage that goes on underneath those clothes. I, I, it takes an entourage to use the bathroom. I don't, I, I, that's a real question I have for women. You just thrown out to the world right there. Did you drink water? And then what happened next? Hit us up at, at Build Series NYC, guys. Get an answer to Rachel. <laughs> Please. Uh, Michael, were you surprised by anything of that era? Um, surprised by anything. I don't know. I, 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 yeah, no, I. Did you know about all the, like, the beauty routine stuff? No, I guess, you know. I guess not. Tell me more about that. Well, no, like, was that surprising to you? I, to see? I mean, do you think a lot of women would, like, go to bed and then, yeah? And, oh, yeah. And then make themselves up and then go back to bed and Did wake I show up early you, and then... like, the advertisements from that time? I pulled a bunch of ads from that time. I was looking at old You were shopping on eBay, right? Getting some uh, collectibles of, of the 50s era? Yeah, a lot of women's magazines, good housekeeping, vintage good housekeeping and things. And I was clipping advertisements because a lot of them, there were a couple that I had clipped that showed women sleeping in bed with an obvious full face of makeup on, lipstick and all. Um, so I, I do think that was probably true yeah another okay. question to ask there we go the audience um now that the show's come out i mean how how excited do you feel have you guys seen it all the way through i know you've you've seen yeah. a little bit of it yeah no i've i've seen it all uh no i <laughs> um but i've only seen it on a computer so i kind of want to check it out uh, on, on the big screen um it's awesome like i'm i'm very happy and excited for people to watch it and uh, now that it's out there i feel relieved <laughs> Yeah. How about you, yeah. Rachel? Yeah, I mean, it, I feel like now, you know, we've been talking about the show. We've been doing press and talking yeah. about the I mean, show. The reviews are amazing. Everyone's talking about the show. Everyone's Thanks. talking about the show. But so I'm, I'm like ready to hear us shut up about it and people watch it now. Yeah. <laughs> are you going to have a, I know you don't watch much of your stuff. Are you going to have a little she watch? She watches she all of She watches all. There we I go. I saw Michael this show. Out. I know. I know. You, know <laughs> you tricked me into I watching know. the pilot <laughs> of this show. They ambushed me. They ambushed you, you with your own pilot. Truly, truly did. <laughs> Uh, they ambushed me and made me watch the pilot. But no, this is the first thing that I've watched of my own in quite some time. And, and I think the reason for that 
is we watched a bunch of it together in my living room on yeah. the computer, uh, was because, I, first of all, I don't like watching it because you, can, you can't change it. It's, it's done. You know, you, you can't go back and fix anything, and that gives me a lot of anxiety. I'm a control freak, and I don't like that about it. So I, I don't like to, it's just torture all around. But if, with this, I, I've never done comedy. And so I, I feel like I have to go back to school in a way and, and figure out for myself what, what's working and what isn't and, and what, uh, we have another season. You know, we, we get to keep going, so. Yeah, I, uh, I think as an actor, I, I mean, I personally think that it's important to watch yourself, no matter how grueling it is, um, because you learn so much. You know, I, I learned that I use my hands too much, you know, and I, I should keep them tied behind my back. But um, just little things like that, and yeah, I, I you know, I, I mean, you don't want to like overdo it. You don't want to get in your head, but um, but I do like watch, especially this show, because I want to see what it looks like. It's it's so beautifully shot, and um, the acting is so great. So I, you know, I want to see it. Well, now that this is out, everyone's going to recognize you guys as Midge and Joel, that's for sure. But what do you guys get What do you guys get the most now? I mean, obviously, you've been a part of some very iconic TV shows, House of Cards, Boardwalk Empire, Girls. I mean, what do you, get, what do you guys get poked at the most? What do you get? Uh, you get a lot of stuff. I've been with you. I've been you. on a bunch of different shows. So, like, if I go to kind of a divey kind of bar and there might be some firefighters there, I might get recognized from Rescue Me, which was a show I did. Of course, yeah, Dennis. Um, or program. like if, you know, if I go to like Brooklyn, I'll get recognized from Girls or Francis Ha. Um, so it, it depends varies. on the borough of the New York City. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It depends on the clientele. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, ha I, I have gotten no, uh, recognized from this. I told, you have? Yeah, I told you I got recognized at Urban Outfitters. And oh, the, yeah. This woman was like, what, what did you do? Why did she, she was perfect. Do you <laughs> yeah. They're already she complaining to you. everything for you. And I was like, I, yeah. I didn't write it. Absolutely. Rachel agrees. Absolutely. What do you, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing House of Cards. I mean, Manhattan was so fantastic too, but House of Cards. It's so yeah. nice when people remember Manhattan. Yeah, generally House of Cards. I also think I look the closest to, in my real, well, not really right now, I'm, but in my real life, which is not currently this, I, I look the closest to the way I looked on House of Cards. But apart from that, I've played characters who I think look quite different from me. This is a pretty different look. Absolutely. Um, I can barely recognize you right there. And it's right? a wig. And it's a wig. That, that's all it takes, really. Um, yeah, but it's nice when people, some people, really different types of people remember Manhattan, and, and that's nice. Yeah. Sometimes the blacklist. Oh, blacklist. Oh, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Okay, well, we're going to throw this at the audience for some questions. Hey guys. Hi. And so one thing I really love is New York City on film. And, but being that this is a period piece, was it really difficult shooting out on the street? Sometimes. <laughs> uh, we did have to shut down big portions of certain streets. Yeah, we, we uh, th so in episode two, there's a scene where I'm walking through the garment district and they shut down, it was, I think it was like 18th street between oh, fifth and six crazy. at like, you know, eight in the morning till like two in the afternoon, and it caused a whole People lot of were traffic. Pissed. But it's New Yorkers so cool, do, aren't you know? the friendliest they when you do shut not down their communication. Care. Yeah. They are they are not enthused yeah. about filming things. They're like, "Who are you? Who cares? Fuck you." Am I allowed to say that? Sorry, you're allowed to say that absolutely, <laughs> and that was warranted. When we shot on St. Mark's a few times, they they shut down St. Mark's. Like everybody comes to watch, and I love that. Like I, you know. Are you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love that. You guys shut down a big part for the, the Christmas scene, right? You guys had Christmas trees at the B. Altman building, yeah. is that right? Were you yeah. there that no. day? Oh, it was so cool. We we shut down part of Thirty Fourth Street. Um, it was it was pretty wild. We we made it Christmas on Thirty Fourth Street. There Again, it's was, Amazon. No, they have a lot of money. They have more money than God. <laughs> they yeah. It, there was a lot of snow, Christmas mm. trees. Everyone was in yeah. very warm jackets yeah. in the middle of July. <laughs> Thank cool. you, Amazon. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, uh, next question. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, I'm interested in hearing a little bit about the development of your relationship. What mm -hmm. was it like to create one that was already falling apart? That's a lovely question. <laughs> Thanks. Um, well, I think what was nice is that we knew each other. Kind of. I mean, we did, though. A little bit. <laughs> not, not like we do now. No, but, but, but we weren't strangers when right, we started right, right. shooting this show. We we'd sort of run into each other and run in similar circles on and off yeah. for a couple of years. So it was nice to have some kind of history before we started shooting that we could 
tear apart. But we oh. hung out a bunch. We got to know each other, I, yeah. I, I, which I feel like is important. Again, like as yeah. an actor, like you wanna, you wanna make it real. So you know, we got to know each other. We hung out a bunch. Mm -hmm. I remember we hung out outside the Natural History Museum for like three, three hours. hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, got some Shake Shack. Uh, but yeah. Um, but it was nice to have a level of comfort so that when we were saying mean things to each other and making each other upset, we were acting and it was, and, and yeah, it was really, I felt it was very supportive. You were very supportive through a lot of my She was panic. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it plays very well. Okay, one last question. Hey, thank you for being here. Hey, uh, thanks. Would you still like to be actors if you lived in the 1950s? Oh, that's a great question. I assume so. I mean, there were so many cool movies being made at that time. Yeah. Uh, I, I just watched uh, Singing in the Rain, <gasps> which was, I think, 50s. I'm pretty sure it was. I actually think that was this year. Was it not this it year? came out this year? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? Um, I think it was 1950. Oh, it was? Yeah. I think. 58? Yeah, maybe something, something like, like that. Something like that, 58. Yeah. But yeah, um, it was, I mean, you know, th these movies were so charming and beautiful, beautifully shot. Um, and, and it reminds me of this because the colors are so vibrant, you know, um, and these screwball comedies. I, I, I liken this show to like a old timey, you know, 1940s, 50s screwball comedy. So, um, so yeah, yes, I would. I think I would fit in nicely <laughs> in that era. And you, Rachel? I don't know. Um, uh, <laughs> I, and the theater I, was so great. The theater was incredible. I would have loved to be a theater actress then. I think being a film and television actress during that time would have been horrible. The well, kinds of expectations yeah. placed on you, the kind of pressure that comes from needing to be a perfect woman. Uh, for me and my modern sensibility, that would have been torture. I think there, you know, especially back then, there was a huge difference between being a male actor and a female actor. Women had to work 10 times harder yeah. for, for a tenth the credit. Well, it's such a beautiful show. It's available now. I'm going to have Rachel say the title because I messed it up the first time. <laughs> the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. There we go. Watch it today, guys. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Rachel, thank you. Michael, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.